But today, he's the brave people and the brave women of Iran who right now are demonstrating to secure the basic rights. But here's what I know. The future will be won by those countries that have reached the full potential of their population. What if our planet Earth really faces another world war? How can the new war start with numerous nations involved? Where is the choke point that could most probably cause World War III? In recent days, I saw weird news of Iran's imminent invasion to Saudi Arabia all over the net. Oh no, none whatsoever. I'm buying uh, Saudi Arabia's intelligence system, which is absolutely excellent, and particularly when it's focused on, on Iran. I'm sure we've got some information as well, and the Israelis too. However, proxy wars between the two governments, not nations but governments, have been going on for decades all over Middle East. The reports of a possible all-out war made me think, what if it really happens? So I started thinking, searching, watching, and talking to experts. The answer is short. In case of such a war, the global economy would go down immediately like never, and the world might end up in another big war. But why is that? Because of a narrow stretch of water called the Strait of Hormuz. This is probably the most important place on the entire Earth you should know about. Hormuz is a 30 miles wide strait in Persian Gulf, neither the Gulf nor Arabian whatever, Persian Gulf. But it doesn't matter. It matters because it's right. Haven't you read your school books? Oh, that's right. Anyway, this strait connects Persian Gulf with the Gulf of Oman. Controlling this narrow strait gives you unbelievable control over global economy. And here's the deal, blocking it destroys the world economy in a matter of days, if not hours. What does it have to do with the world economy? Even in the year 2022, still 90% of global trade is carried out by ships, as it has always been for thousands of years. There are a few strategic maritime straits and canals that play important roles in the sea trade, like the Suez Canal, Panama Canal, Strait of Gibraltar, and the Turkish Strait. But the Strait of Hormuz is the most dangerous and vital one, and there are many reasons for it. Let's talk about the name first. Where does it come from? Hormuz is a Persian term, a male name in ancient Persia, and the short form of Ahura Mazda, the god in ancient Iranian religion, Zoroastrianism. For all recorded history, it has connected Arab and Persian civilizations with the Indian subcontinent and Pacific Asia. For example, before the rise of European seaborne empires in 15th and 16th centuries, porcelain from China and spices from Indochina Peninsula passed through the strait on the way to Central Asia and Europe. But I mean, sea trade, is that all? So it's not a big deal. No, no, no. A lot more than that. Just watch till the end. Nearly half of the world's oil reserves are in the countries around the Persian Gulf. And oil, as you know, is still the biggest source of energy in the world. Despite efforts to reduce dependency on it, it still plays the most important role in the global economy. This narrow strait is important because more than a fifth of the world's petroleum liquids, which is around 21 million barrels per day, are transported through it. Eight countries share coasts with the Persian Gulf, including Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Bahrain, UAE, and Oman. Except for Saudi Arabia, which has coasts alongside the Red Sea, other seven countries have to transport their cargoes, whether it's oil or goods, in the Persian Gulf, Strait of Hormuz, and Gulf of Oman. Roughly 40% of reserves of natural gas is also laid in this region, especially in Qatar and Iran. You know how much gas is important when you see European countries striving not to have a horrible cold winter this year just because they have imposed sanctions on Russia for the Ukraine war and Russia doesn't supply the gas as before. These are just oil and gas, let alone the big ports in Iran, Saudi Arabia, Qatar and UAE, loading hundreds of tons of goods and foods costing millions of dollars to the world and from the world each day. Generally around 15% of world's energy supply comes from around the Persian Gulf and through the Strait of Hormuz. If the supply gets interrupted, oil prices might go up three times and when the cost of energy goes up, the cost of everything goes up. Because in each and every good you consume, there is a trace of them. 
Therefore, you can somehow say it's the most precious and vital region on the entire Earth. However, for political reasons, United States and Europe are mostly worried about possible blockage of the Strait of Hormuz, though in reality, most of the energy supply from it goes to the east of Asia for countries like China and Japan. Therefore, no country on Earth cannot rest peacefully if anything happens there. Now we're reaching the interesting part. Even if there is no conflict in this region, still navigating through this narrow strait is a danger itself. Because eight islands are located on the way through the strait and all of them belong to Iran. So a pair of two mile shipping lanes are being drawn to help reduce the risk of any crash and accident. Now we know why big economies and military powers are always sensitive about this issue. And the main one, as you know, is United States. Washington has nearly 40 military bases and around 15,000 troops around the Persian Gulf. But there are two special places for Washington in this region. The Air Force Base in Qatar and US 5th Fleet in Bahrain. In these two special bases, there are nearly 26,000 US troops. And most of the time, at least one of US aircraft carriers is in the Persian Gulf or stationed near it. And here our story gets tense because the presence of United States in this region and near Iranian borders is what Tehran doesn't like that much. As these two countries have had unpleasant relations, to put it mildly, during past four decades. We have already seen dire incidents when Iran seized British and Greek oil tankers near the Strait of Hormuz because they seized Iranian oil tankers first. In both cases, they were forced to release Iranian oil tankers in order to get their tankers back. We have seen attacks on Israeli ships in the region. We have seen hunting of an American advanced drone, MQ-4 Global Hawk, which is considered to be the most precious drone in US over the Strait of Hormuz by Iranian missiles in 2019. President Trump saying today that the American people will soon find out if the United States is going to war with Iran, saying the regime made a very big mistake shooting down a US military surveillance drone like the one you see on your screen at 4.05 a.m. Iranian time over the Strait of Hormuz. We have seen Iran threatening to invade U.S. bases in the region and actually invade the Al-Assad base in Iraq using ballistic missiles. This was an attack like no other. It was an attack certainly like nothing I've ever seen or experienced. What have you learned so far? Their missiles are accurate. Did that surprise you? We knew it, but to see it, they fired those missiles to significant range and they hit pretty much where they wanted to hit. We have seen Iran itself or through its proxies in Yemen and Iraq attack Saudi oil fields and targets in UAE in recent years. Actually, Iran and US alongside its regional allies have been on the verge of starting a big war for a number of times in recent years. Things are happening uh, that could take us to war if, if, uh, if we don't take, make the correct move here. Now, there is always a tiny possibility of a big war in this region. Tehran always threatens that if anything breaks out, it will immediately block the Strait of Hormuz. We're not going to talk about reasons of these conflicts between Iran, US, UAE, and Saudi Arabia, even Israel, because I think you all know that. Though the main reason is that after Donald Trump unilaterally pulled the United States out of the nuclear deal with Iran, Washington has forced other nations not to buy Iranian oil as a part of the maximum pressure policy, which did not work, by the way. So Iran is now allowing other oil tankers from US and Western countries travel through the Strait of Hormuz and buy oil from rich Arabian neighbors, while Tehran is actually deprived of the right. And Tehran be like, dude, WTF, if I'm not allowed to sell the main source of my income, why should I let others do their business in peace, especially through my gateway? Tehran has not still fulfilled its promise of blocking the waterway. Because as I said, most of the energy supply goes to the East of Asia and particularly China, which is a close friend. But if things get dirty, it cannot be an obstacle for them. There is a delicate fact here. Look, this situation is not solely because of Tehran's policy and the government ruling Iran. Iran wants to have total control over the Persian Gulf, no matter who rules the country. Even during the Shah, they were the ones who initiated the OPEC organization to lead and manage oil prices. Also, disagreements between Iran and its Arab neighbors goes back to more than a thousand years ago. You might say, well, Iran 
has threatened a few times to close this passage, but haven't. You're right, but now things are different. All conflicts around the world are heating up. The possibility of any deal between US and Iran on the nuclear issue has faded, and Iran is in more direct coordination with Moscow and Beijing to counter US. These allies have two times held mutual drills in the Sea of Oman near the Strait of Hormuz in recent two years. Also, Russia welcomes any war in this region to distract attention from its own problem with Ukraine, in part because then the main source of oil and gas will be blocked and this is what Russia wants. But how can Iran block the Strait of Hormuz? Well, there are many ways to do so. US presence in this region is impressive. Let me, let me tell you something. The United States of America is the most powerful nation on earth. But theoretically, Iran has various ways and weapons to do it. The easiest way to do so is using hundreds of sea mines, and Iran has thousands of them. Iran also has more than 10 submarines in the Persian Gulf, hundreds if not thousands of speedboats equipped with missiles, various classes of warships and destroyers. Also, don't forget about 52 different classes of drones and thousands of ballistic missiles alongside fighter jets and so on. And there are hundreds of anti-air missile defense systems stationed on Iranian coasts and islands that could target American fighters, bombers and drones, like what we saw in 2019. And besides all of that, this is the region Iran has had control over it for thousands of years. But American troops are away from their home thousands of miles. So Iranians, I guess, know better what to do. So what happens if it really happens? Immediately after the blockage, world economy will face an unprecedented shock, but the longer it takes, the harder will be the damage. So involved countries would have to accept Iran's request under pressure of their people and also other governments, or start military operation to free the waterway. Most probably US and Saudi Arabia would be the main actors in such a scenario. China would agree with Iran prior to such a plan to support it, as far as Japan, Australia and South Korea are main victims of this incident. There is a possibility of dragging Israel to it, as far as Iran's proxy groups could also enter the conflict. If Israel tries to fly its fighter jets to Iran for bombing key centers, it only has two choices, to get to Iran through Saudi sky in the south or through Azerbaijan in the north. As far as Iraq and Syria are under control of Tehran, Saudi Arabia could be involved in the war by that time, but Azerbaijan will also most probably face punishments. As you know, relations between these two brother nations have recently experienced serious difficulties. In this case, Turkey as a NATO member and Armenia might also be dragged into the war. European economy gets a fatal blow and they'll have to find a way to at least get more Russian oil and gas while they have banned it themselves. Just imagine, all the economic problems in Europe now is just because they are receiving less oil and gas from Russia. If the other main source is also blocked, in the end, China, if it chooses, could use this as a trigger for war with Taiwan, when US is concentrated on the Middle East and Iran. As you know, their president, Xi Jinping, recently said, that they have to free Taiwan by force. Which, by the way, I don't know why. Just relax, calm down and live your lives because Taiwan is not going to invade you unless you'll get caught in a situation like Russia. Considering recent reports about imminent war between Iran and Saudi Arabia, such a scenario is closer than ever, but still not happening as far as world leaders have not gone insane. There are strangely lots of conflicts and disagreements between so many countries and especially powers and superpowers all around the world, particularly in Europe, East of Asia and Middle East. The world is like a big bomb. If just one madman strikes it, Thank you, my friends, for spending your precious time to watch this video. I've put too much energy and time on this, so please subscribe, share it with your friends and also write your opinion down in the comments for me.